Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to analyze exactly what big dick energy is. So this is in response to a video, a TikTok video that a girl made and it was posted on Twitter and, and people were tweeting about this video and I made a tweet about it as well. I mean, imagine explaining that sentence to somebody 15 years ago. And this girl's TikTok video, uh, who, you know, this girl seems to... Uh, probably be in her early 20s. She likes to party. She likes to do a lot of drugs. But her video that she made was a rant against guys who I guess are always leaving comments on her TikTok videos telling her that she needs to find God, uh, you know, find the Lord Jesus Christ, become a Christian, settle down, stop partying. And my response was, um, yeah, you know, she may be wrong to live that way. Let's just say that she's wrong to live that way. I'm not even sure that's the case. We can talk about it. Let's say she's wrong to live that way, but you are actually more wrong to tell her how to live, even if you're right. And if you don't get this point, if you don't realize this, then life is just going to be way more difficult, way more futile. It's going to be full of way more suffering than it needs to be. So I think a good way of doing this or talking about this issue is to analyze what I think uh, big dick energy is <laughs> on a on a fundamental academic level. Let's take an academic love, uh, lens to big dick energy. Uh, and by the way, don't, don't bother pointing it out. I know that probably nothing is more small dick energy than trying to analyze what big dick energy is or big dick energy versus small dick energy. So don't, don't even bother pointing it out, I get it. Um, but you know, something that I say often on this channel is you can be right but just because you're right about something doesn't mean it matters. And I think that's a good indication of what we're going to talk about here and ultimately what small dick energy is. So very similar to my criticism of MGTOW. You know, you talk to these MGTOW guys and they're right, you know, and they're right about all the facts they point out. They look at divorce statistics, what's called divorce rape. You know, men do not fare very well in divorce courts. They do not get the children. They have to pay a lot of alimony, child support, whatever it is. And you can look, the, look at those statistics and go, well, look, this is, uh, you're right. There's no really argument there on the facts. However, I do think they're wrong because their worldview is wrong because in a sense they're using these facts about how terrible uh, divorce is, how terrible marriage is, how terrible modern women are to isolate, to not connect, to not reach out, to not form secure attachments. And part of the reason is, right, they just don't know how. Maybe that was never modeled for them. So it's way more scary than it already is to go out and form secure attachments. So what you do is you use these facts that are correct. These facts are correct, but you use them to justify ultimately an unhealthy worldview. I mean, that's what propaganda is. It's Propaganda isn't made up facts. It's just using selected facts to paint a picture that you want to paint. Same thing with maybe guys who perceive they have some physical deficiency and then they can't get a girlfriend. So maybe they're, they think they're too short or too fat or too bald and say, well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm too short to get a girlfriend. And, and look, I, I went on this Reddit forum, this Manosphere, maybe MGTOW Reddit forum, and I look at these statistics and I look at what women prefer in men and it's not a short guy like me. So I'm just not going to try. And the thing, you know, some dating coaches may, may come on, some mindset bros will come on and say, oh, no, you know, that's not true. That's just in your head. Uh, you know, the preference for height is just an illusion. It's all about your personality. And no, that's wrong, too, because there obviously is a preference out there. If a girl had a choice between a tall guy and a short guy, of course preferences exist. But you look at these preferences that exist and you use them to not take action, to shut down, to isolate to tune out. You know, you look at the biases out there versus what do you want? What do you want in a girlfriend in this case? Okay, well, how do you go about getting that? Will it be more difficult for you if you're bald? Yeah, generally I would say it probably will be. Does that mean you can't get what you want? And I think that's what's going on here with what big dick energy is and what came up in this video, right? So she may be wrong to party and do a lot of drugs. And by the way, I don't even know if she's wrong. She may be wrong. I don't know. Maybe this is just 
what she needs to go through in order to develop psychologically. Maybe she needs to go through this party phase, which a lot of young women do, and no, that is not a modern phenomenon. You know, that is not a symptom of this disease that is modern culture. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, paint it like that <clears throat> to feel like victims, you know, to bring up that nostalgia, which is ultimately what we say here, it's self-pity. Nostalgia is a form of self-pity. But I'm not even sure she is wrong. Okay, right. Ethically, oh, you shouldn't do that. But this isn't a philosophy channel. This is psychology. That may be what she needs to do in order to develop into the woman that she needs to become. Um, you know, like I say about feminism, um, I'm not a feminist, but you got to get why it exists. Do you not understand why feminism exists? Like, imagine you're a young world, maybe not unlike this girl in this TikTok video. You're a young woman out in the world trying to make your own way, you know, trying to form attachments with other men and with men. And every every guy you meet is some like 32 year old graphic designer who makes most of his money off Fiverr and rides along on a longboard, um, rides around on the longboard. I mean, you would start to think, well, somebody around here needs to start acting like a man. Hence feminism. So even if it's wrong, like you have to understand why this stuff exists. But I'm not even sure that it is wrong. What I do know is wrong, for sure, is that um, you're wrong to tell her how to live. Because by telling her how to live, the implication in that, especially when it's somebody you don't know, especially when it's somebody you've never even met, you never will met, it's more wrong to tell her how to live because the implication is that her consciousness is not separate from yours in any way, nor should it be. Her consciousness is not separated from yours uh, and even if it is inferior, let's say, even if her consciousness is inferior, it's still uh, vital based on who you are as an individual. Who you must be as an individual if psychology is ever going to is even exist as a field in the first place. Psychology, not sociology. Your consciousness is separate from hers. And her consciousness needs to be her, on her own and she needs to go and, and develop, you know, in whatever way she needs to develop. And that's what small dick energy is. It is thinking that you have some power or should have some power over somebody else who is completely outside what you have power over on a metaphysical level. I mean, you know, now I'm thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, small dick energy is a great way to be unfunny. And I'm thinking about um, the comedian Sarah Silverman. <laughs> I don't you guys may be too young to, to remember, but back in the 90s, she was hilarious. She was hilarious and she made a bunch of offensive jokes and it was awesome. And then I don't know, something happened. I'm not gonna uh, pontificate on that. Something happened in her life and she started to go around telling everybody how they should live, how they should talk. And she became super, super unfunny. And that's what you come off as. You come, you come off as a very unfunny Sarah Silverman when you have small dick energy when trying to get people to do something that you have no right to even mention to them, even if you are right, ultimately. So that's what big dick energy is, right? It's a boundary. It's, it's having an identity. It's being able to delineate between your consciousness and somebody else's consciousness. And you can talk with somebody about what's going on. You can tell them how, how you think, of course, that's a function of a healthy boundary, but their decision is ultimately their own decision and your energy you know your your libido it just leaks out of these holes in your boundary when you don't have a strong boundary and ultimately yeah you have what we would call um, small dick energy and so you know I, I, I say that um, she may not be wrong right she may be on her own path of development I don't know what's going on with this girl so she may not be wrong to do, you know, all this party and drug taking thing. Um, but you may not be wrong as well on a psychological level to, to tell, you know, it, maybe that's just where you are right now. Guys on Twitter trying to, or TikTok trying to get those girls to live a certain way. Maybe you, maybe you're not wrong. Maybe that's where you are right now in your stages of development. You just need to go on TikTok or Instagram and try to get girls to find Jesus. Uh, objectively, ethically, is that right? No, but that may be what you need to do to grow in the way 
that you need to grow. But ultimately, I think you're going to get to a place where you realize uh, this isn't helping. I, I don't like myself when I do this. I, I don't feel good, right? I feel that small dick energy. I, I feel my libido, you know, wasting through these huge gaping holes in my boundary. And um, maybe I need to do something to change. And when you're ready to change, I think we can help you with how to do that. You know, a boundary, you don't just uh, develop a boundary on, on its own. It's based on, I would argue, how well you manage emotions, how well you manage specifically your anxiety and anger, your two fundamental emotions. When you regulate those emotions in a certain way, in a healthy way, that's where a boundary naturally develops from. And that's what we can help you with here, of course. We have delineated exactly how these emotions work and because these emotions work in a certain way in order to regulate them, in order to process them, i.e. in order to become more aware of them. So they affect us less and less outside of our conscious awareness. We need to talk about them at the very beginning. At the very least, we need to begin to talk about our emotions, what is going on with us, and we need to do it in a very specific, a certain way. We can help you with that here animusempire.com slash schedule uh, thank you guys I'll leave it there if you have any questions animus at animusempire.com and remember self-righteousness is a feeling often a feeling that we use to mask our own sense of uselessness